Calculating the Speed of Light with Jupiter's Moons by Claire Jenneris and Linnea Dalman. You've probably never heard of Ole Roemer. Ole Roemer is a Danish astronomer who used Jupiter's moons to calculate the speed of light from 1668 to 1674, a long time ago. How did he do that? Well, first he calculated the periods of Jupiter's moons, Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. This allowed him to calculate what time exactly a given moon should transit in front of Jupiter six months later, assuming that the speed of light is infinite. This assumption was necessary because if the speed of light was infinite, the light would reach us the instant the event occurred. So, Roemer waited for this transit and found that the moon actually transited about 16 minutes later than what he predicted. Why? Well, in six months, the Earth had moved farther away from Jupiter in its orbit, increasing the distance between them and therefore the distance that light from the transit had to travel. This time difference between the expected and actual time of transit proved that the speed of light was not, in fact, infinite. Wow! Ole Roemer's calculated value for the speed of light was 214,000 kilometers per second, which is astonishingly close to the accepted value of 299,792 kilometers per second. I think we can all dub this experiment as a success. Mini history lesson. Ole Roemer is not the only reason Jupiter's moons are famous. In January 1610, Galileo Galilei used one of the first models of a telescope to observe Jupiter's moons. He determined they were satellites three months later, which consequently disproved the geocentric model of the universe. The church was not happy, but that's a story for another day. Woohoo, progress! Our method was pretty similar to Ole Roemer's, but we were able to use more specific, already calculated data from a handy website called Sky and Telescope. This website allowed us to see the exact times for when Io begins to transit Jupiter over a six-month period. We use this data to pick a time to observe and capture an image of a transit in bracket. Unfortunately, we forgot to remove the lens cap and missed the transit. We did capture images of Jupiter, though. Here, you can see Jupiter and three moons. It's too bright to resolve Io transiting in front of Jupiter. Using sky and telescope's data, we plotted Io's period and the observed transits. Io's period is 1.77 days, meaning that Io should transit in front of Jupiter every 1.77 days. Despite this, Earth moves farther away from Jupiter in these six months, meaning it takes longer for the light from the transit to reach us. So, as the sine wave continues to later dates, the times of transit gradually occur later than we would expect if the speed of light were infinite. The top graph shows the transits occurring when we would expect, on time with the period. This occurs in the first 15 days. The bottom graph shows the difference in time in the last 70 days. As you can see, the red stars, which represent actual times of transit, occur earlier than what we would expect which is represented by the blue stars. After exactly six months, we expected Io to transit at 12.54 a.m. if light were infinite, but Io actually transited at 12.34 a.m., confirming that light does not travel instantaneously. Using this time difference of 20 minutes and noting that the Earth had moved 2.71 times 10 to the 11th meters since our initial transit, we calculated the speed of light. Our final speed is 226,258 kilometers per second. This is a better estimate than Ole Roemer's and on the same order of magnitude of the accepted value, but still off by a factor of 1.32. Overall, Jupiter's moons have been very important to scientific progress. We think it's super cool that we could recreate calculations done hundreds of years ago with more specific data and end up with a speed of light close to the accepted value. Also, we would like to thank Professor Choi for all the help.